Let us go a little deeper into convex and concave functions. Um, see, I know this that this is a convex function. We've already done this in our earlier uh, recording, and this is a concave function. Now, in terms of derivatives, how could you find out which function is convex and which function is concave? So, let us take up the slope of this function, say at this point. So, the slope is given by this line. Hmm? And here you know this that f dash x or f dash is less than zero. Okay, you move you you move further, and you take up the slope at this point. Hmm. You take up the slope at this point. Here, f dash is equal to zero. You move still further and I'm so sorry and uh, you take up the slope at this point here f dash is greater than zero. So slopes have moved from f dash less than zero to f dash equal to zero to f dash greater than zero. So slope are moving from negative to positive. Okay. And how will then the slopes of these slopes would change? Okay. Slopes of these slopes would change. This will change from, in fact, that the double derivative okay for for this kind of a function would be greater than zero hmm? and that is what convexity is right the slope of this slope is changing from it it is it is it is moving from downwards to upwards so slope of the slope is changing and in case if that is greater than zero so this becomes a con convex function now let us look at here for a concave function uh, you are you take up the slope at say this point here at this point f dash is greater than zero then you take up the take up the slope at this point where where f dash is equal to zero and then you take up the slope at this point where f dash is greater than zero clear so it is moving from f dash sorry less than zero this is less than zero f dash greater than zero to f dash equal to zero to f dash less than zero so how does the slope of slope is changing it will be f double dash less than zero and this becomes a concave function. So in case if the, the double derivative of the function is less than zero, this is a concave function. In case of the double derivative of the function is greater than zero, that is a convex function. Okay. Also, if you look at it, the, the convex function is actually giving you a point of minima. Okay, and a concave function is giving you a point of maxima. That's the point. Okay, a strictly concave function will give you a unique global maxima or minima. Okay, so in case if you have this function, this is a convex function, and this is a strictly convex function, this is the point of global global minima okay this is the point of global minima or in fact unique global minima this is the point of unique global minima well this is again a convex function okay this also is a convex function but all of these points all of these points here all of these points all of these points here they are giving you global minima okay 
but note that these are not unique all of them giving you the the lowest value of f but they are not unique okay they're not unique in this case you have a concave function it gives you the point of maxima it's a strictly concave function so this is the point of unique global maxima here you have here you have of course it is this is this is a concave function but not a strictly concave function so these are the points of global max but not unique global max okay fine so so just just writing it for the sake of completeness this is a strictly convex function this is a convex function this is a strictly concave function and this is a concave function so if you have a strictly concave function you get a point strictly convex function you get a point of unique global minima if you have a convex function but not a strictly convex function you get a global minima but not unique if you have a strictly concave function you get unique global max if you have a concave function but not strictly concave function you get global max but not unique hmm? okay thanks